party in the sky. All the birds of the forest and field were once invited to a party in heaven. The nowhere bird, who nests in the topmost cloud and flies so high that no one has ever seen her, sent invitations to them all. She did not invite Tortoise, of course, because he is not a bird. But when he heard about the party, Tortoise could not bear the thought of being left out. His mouth watered and his pebbly eyes gleamed with envy. So one day he went to a lonely clearing and tried his best to be a bird. Again and again he climbed onto a log and jumped off, flapping his stumpy legs. But it was useless. So, taking a look at his reflection in the smooth, shiny dome of his shell, he smartened himself up and presented himself to the birds. <laughs> Times are hard, he said. Food is scarce. We must all share at times like this. Let me come with you to the party in heaven. We couldn't take you to heaven, exclaimed the parrot. You're cunning and sly and rude and greedy. Besides, you can't even fly. I've changed. <laughs> Honestly, I have. I'm as nice as can be nowadays. And if each of you were to lend me one feather, I could fly. I'd be so good, you wouldn't even know I was there. So the birds took pity on Tortoise, and each of them lent him a feather. Tortoise looked very fine indeed in his party clothes. Such an array of colours, such a variety of plumes. And then, as he flapped his little legs, he rose off the ground and soared towards heaven. The Nowhere Bird's feast was laid out from the stars to the rainbow and from the moon to the dark snow clouds. She greeted her guests graciously and said she had never seen anything quite like the tortoise bird before. But as she spoke, Tortoise strode straight past her and proceeded to devour everything in sight. Barging the birds out of the way, he munched and stuffed and wolfed and bolted his way through the best of all the food until he was stuffed as full as a pillar. The birds were furious. Some pecked at the scraps Tortoise left, but most were too angry to eat. The parrot begged forgiveness of the nowhere bird. This greedy animal has spoiled your party. I'm very sorry we brought him. One by one, the angry birds snatched back the feathers they had lent Tortoise and left the party. Tortoise did not even notice. He was too busy gobbling and guzzling to lift his head or say goodbye. When at last he looked round, he was alone with the nowhere bird on the topmost cloud, with nothing on his back but his smooth, shiny shell. Help! Help! Come back! He called after the swooping flock of birds. Wait for me! How can I fly down without any feathers? Hey, come back! You there! Parrot! At least give a message to my wife! The parrot looked back over his shoulder. What should I tell her? Tell her to bring everything soft out from the house, all the cushions and beds and blankets and carpets, so that I can jump down onto them. Do you hear, you mangy old bird? The parrot had dropped out of sight below the clouds. 
But he did go to Tortoise's house on his way home, and he did give a message to Tortoise's wife. At the party, the nowhere bird admired your husband's shell enormously. She's never seen anything hard, you see. Only feathers and cloud and fruit. So, your husband says you should bring out of doors everything solid and spiky and hard you own so that the nowhere bird can look down from the sky and see them. Of course. Of course. Tortoise's wife hurried indoors and brought out pots and pans, chairs, tables, a bicycle, two stone jugs, and the kitchen sink. Piling them up in a heap, she squinted up at the sky and waved in case her husband could see her. From high, high up in the sky, Tortoise could just make out his hut and the figure of his wife fetching things out and piling them in the garden. It was too far to see exactly what she brought, but when she waved, he thought she must be ready for him. So he closed his eyes and jumped. Down, 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 falling, falling. Tortoise somersaulted through space until he thought he had been falling forever. He landed on the pile of things with a noise like a dropped egg. And his shell shattered to pieces. His wife tried very hard to get used to him without his shell, but he was so scrawny and green that at last she collected up all the bits and glued them back together. That's why to this day, the tortoise looks as he does.